Good to be in the house of the Lord. Praise Amen. God. Appreciate those of you that are able to be here tonight. And I want to thank those of you that were able to be here last night. I know a lot of you were out of town doing different things, but uh, it was a good meeting for Tom. And uh, so that was a good thing. We were able to host that for him. And I appreciate those of you that were able to be here. Mike and Mike. Uh, help Suzanne was a, was a blessing. So thank you for that. Praise the Lord. And of course, I got a text from Tom today wanting to do it again next fall since. <laughs> but I didn't respond to the text yet. So <laughs> working on that. Still working on it. Praise the Lord. But anyhow, God's good. And uh, what do we got for needs tonight? Anybody need uh, prayer requests? Yes, Peter. Um, let me try to get everything uh, straight. So, uh, lady that we're still connected with our old church. Uh, friend of her family was in a serious car accident just in the last hour or so needs mm -hmm. prayer. Um, the woman that was here last night, just, I told you, uh, she's the one whose son took his life. Um, just needs healing there. She needs healing in her marriage. It's, good. It's, good. It's, good. It, it's just a real messed up situation. Um, and then uh, the Lord's opened some doors at work. I've been able to um, be friends with this project manager that's out in Arizona, and she's opened up about some of the issues she's her mom's having with cancer. So, you know, I, I let she was very thankful I let her know that they're Catholic, and I said, you know, we'd, we'd be praying for her mom in church. Sure, so. praise the Lord. Anybody else? Yes, Tim. Yes, I appreciate uh, you know, the prayers that came from my family. Uh, my sister, uh, she had neck surgery, so I want to pray that. She recovers well from that. Yeah. She's 80, 83. And uh, when we went down for the funeral, she's only sister left now, you know, and it was really kind of a hard time. And my brother, he's uh, got dementia, started having the first uh, part of that and cancer. So just as you get a crazy family. And I'm also thankful, you know, we um, uh, pulled the trade of a valley high school band and and we had to do that Saturday, late Saturday week, just 13 hour day. But I thank the Lord that we always pray where we get our spot for the band trailer. And they had to remodel Pella High School. And um, where they put us at was originally where we asked them to put it at. But that was just a perfect place to be put out to get out of there. So I, we always, I don't take none of that for granted, you know, that hey, it's God's blessings. And, so I just want to thank the Lord for that. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. No accidents with God. No accidents. Yes, Mike. Uh, Karen Goodson and Roy uh, mm -hmm. got rear-ended by a school bus. Oh. Um, they're not hurt, but they're at the hospital because her neck is a little sore and stuff and wants to make sure everything's okay. And so just praying for protection over them and any... Anything that the enemy's trying to pull up on her, uh, we just bind it and declare her healing and everything's okay in Jesus' name. Amen. I've had a couple of calls from uh, Alvin, <clears throat> which I haven't taken because I hadn't, didn't have my phone on, but I got a couple of voicemails from him and uh, apparently Robert Red is having some uh, issues. That we, I won't go into all of it, but anyway, there's a car involved and getting it repaired and obviously you, you all know he's he's blind so I'm assuming it's his daughters or somebody who does some errand running for him and so forth but so we need to pray for Robert and that situation and see where it goes from here but uh, I don't want to get into all of it but I mean those of you that were involved you know Mike you and I were involved in that uh, yep. kind of rehab of the house here a few years back when Joni before Joni or right after Joni passed away yeah. I guess and uh, so some of the issues that were ongoing then are still going on and so it kind of limits what we can do because of that this is what I'm saying because of the other family involved and right. how all of that works but anyway we can we can pray and God can certainly move in that situation and that's what we'll believe for so yes sir um we've kind of, we have like a lot of trials coming at us right now and um, just that we would have the strength and the courage and the grace and the peace with each other yeah, <laughs> to yeah. get through it all. Amen. Um, but also very thankful and very blessed for the trials. So. Praise the Lord. 
it's a good indication that God's doing something if the devil's stirring up all kinds of mm -hmm. junk. So, Amen. Amen. We just persevere in the Lord. Amen. We'll remember that. Anyone else? Anything else? All right, let's stand. Okay, Peter. Uh, just still prayer, continue prayer for finances, job opportunities. Just we still need. We got more bills than money at the moment, but that's going to change. Amen. Actually, we have more money than the Lord. I believe. Praise the Lord. Let's stand. Gotta be careful what I, what I confess. That's right. You gotta kind of watch the tongue. All right. Thank you. We just come before you right now in the name of Jesus, and we believe, Lord, for every need that was spoken here today, Lord, for every situation, for every circumstance. You knew all of them before we even mentioned them, but you ask us to bring them to you, to cast all of our care upon you, so that when the, the breakthroughs come, when the healings and the deliverance and the and the uh, move of, uh, of the Spirit in our lives happens, we know that it came from you and not from man, not because of a coincidence or an accident, but because you are involved in every situation and every circumstance of our life. In you we live and move and have our being, and Father, we just thank you tonight that every one of these prayer requests will result in a testimony of your faithfulness and your goodness to us. And we just give you praise right now, celebrating over the victory that we will see manifest in our lives. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, Lord, nothing is impossible with you. As long as we believe, nothing's impossible for us. So, Lord, tonight we declare our confidence in your goodness and your faithfulness in Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Ron, you have become the designated offering taker up there. If there is that word. <laughs> should have it now. Yep. Would you ask the Lord to bless us tonight? We need to tell the Lord to come right after rebound. Thank you, Mercy. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All the chaos. All the confusion. I'm wondering, was it all? That's okay. Lord, ask something to bring your heart tonight. Please help me. Thank God. It's more real.
great us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We celebrate you tonight. And all that you are and all that you're doing. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Everybody said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Worship team, abbreviated. Or such as worship team life. Such as worship team life. <laughs> well, Wednesday night is uh, church life, apparently, because everybody's gone tonight. Hallelujah. Half the calories the same, right? Taste, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> oh, oh, that James, almost hurt. James is in here. Someone's got to do it. That's right. <laughs> James is chasing birds tonight. <laughs> in his house, sadly. So. Oh, no. Praise the Lord. He's got to get it for 10 minutes. I was going to say, he's got cats. Yep. Give him a ladder. Praise God. Well, it is Wednesday night, and so uh, we try to be as brief as possible. We have to split off. Essentially, it's your schedules and work schedules and so forth. Not taking anything away from the Lord, but uh, try to share with you some things tonight that uh, God has been speaking to me about. Now, it's, uh, well, I'm not going to preface it. I'll just, we'll, we'll just get ready. Praise the Lord. There are some things about uh, faith and, and our relationship with the Lord that I think sometimes we, uh, oftentimes I should say, in terms of the, the church in general, uh, have a tendency to uh, either misunderstand or just not grasp. Uh, to the extent that God would have us comprehend what it is He's trying to do in us and through us. And religion has a way of uh, compounding that uh, confusion and those questions. So, uh, as we all know, Jesus didn't come to just uh, create another religion or a different religion. He came to fulfill the covenant Amen. that uh, God had with humanity so that we could all move into a relationship with Him rather than a, a servant uh, master kind of relationship to a father and child relationship. And uh, in order to really benefit and by that I don't mean just stuff but I mean actually be able to experience the, the fullness of what God has for us. We need to understand that relationship and operate from it. So, with that said, let's begin with uh, Romans chapter 16, Mike. Uh, Romans 16, verses 17 and 18. And again, thank you all for being here. And I appreciate you coming out. Worshiping the Lord tonight. Praise God. So now I beseech you, uh, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they are such, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Over the years, and I mentioned this, I don't know if it was last Wednesday or whenever it was, um, we've had people, you know, obviously come and go like any church would. And it's oftentimes it has been because of a religious kind of mindset that people get into. And for whatever reason, uh, they can't embrace the grace of God, the goodness of God. And they feel like they just have to keep this kind of old covenant relationship going. And uh, without naming any names, it happens, and that's just the reality. But I, I feel bad, not because I don't, you know, I want to control people, because obviously people come and they go on their own free will. You know, we're not running a prison camp or a uh, cult. Mm -hmm. uh, amen. But uh, it's, it's often because of these kind of things. They're, they, they're more comfortable with rules. Than, than they are with the grace of God. 
but just operating in love and uh, trusting in the goodness and the mercy of God. And that's what he's talking about. That's what Paul's talking about. He isn't talking about a doctrinal conflict as much as he is people that have rejected. These are people who are embracing Judaism, the ritual, the old covenant, and he's struggling with that thing. And he said, when people are like that, the best thing to do, note them. I'm not saying, you know, put a 666 on their forehead. <laughs> but just recognize that's where they're coming from. Leave them alone. You can only do what they allow you to do, and you don't want to get into conflict with everybody and strife and all that stuff. So just notice that's where they're coming from. And if they don't want to embrace anything more than that, praise the Lord. There's plenty of churches out there that would love to have them be a part of their group. Praise the Lord. So they are such served not our Lord Jesus Christ with their own belly, or satisfying themselves by good words and pure speeches to see the hearts of the simple or the innocent is actually the way that's translated. Let me let's just look at this one scripture here to kind of validate this. Acts chapter 15, verse 1. Certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. This is the book of Acts. This is into the new covenant. Jesus has been crucified, buried, resurrected, seated at the right hand of God, and this is the reason. this is what's going on. So this isn't anything new. What we experience today is the same thing that's been happening for two thousand years. People are offered the grace of God, the goodness of God, and they want to go back under a religious system that requires of you. What you really can't do anyway. Right. But that's where they're comfortable, okay? All right. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Well, in other words, if, if the offerings that they were doing under the Old Covenant would have delivered people from sin, then they would, have, they would have stopped at some point, right? But they weren't. They had to just keep doing it. Because the offerings, those sacrifices, were only to cover the sin, not to eliminate the sin, or not to do away with the sin. Under the Old Covenant, you could not just vanquish the sin from a person's life. You just had to cover it for another year. So that withholding judgment because of the sin for another year until the next year and the next day of atonement. For then would they have not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more consciousness of sin. I'm, t I'm just, I'm, here's where I'm at. I want to I be there. I want to live in that place where I don't even have a consciousness of sin. Amen. Mm. The only reason I have a consciousness of sin is because I've been in church for a long time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, and you know what I'm saying? You get you get used to that's not even right. That's a good, that's a bad thing. That's not good. This isn't that's gonna cause you some problems, and God's not gonna like that. And I'm not saying that we should just live like crazy people, but I am saying if see if, if we live as the redeemed people that we are, we would just live an innocent life. Yes. You know, little kids do stuff that you know, we might say it's naughty, but we don't punish them when they're one, two, three years old because they're innocent. They don't know any better, right? Well, that's the way Adam was. He didn't know that good and evil. He had to eat from the tree of good knowledge of good and evil, so all they knew was innocence. Everything's good. It's all good. Well, think about it. The law has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. We have been redeemed back to that original condition, and that original condition is not sinless, it's innocent. We don't have, we're not eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're eating simply from the tree of life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay? So, the law having a shadow of good things to come, not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Well, then, if they could, they would have stopped doing the offerings because the worshipers would have been purged. And had no more consciousness of sin. Mm -hmm. but they had a consciousness of sin. They were reminded all the time of it. That's why they had to keep bringing the sacrifices. Okay? So Jesus comes into the world. 
And he says to the Father, sacrifice and offering is not what you're looking for. But you have prepared for me a body. Amen. That comes from the Psalms. He's quoting from the Psalms. In other words, perfection would no longer be based on the performing of us performing the laws of an old covenant. Right. Amen. Our perfection would be based on the perfection of Jesus Christ. That's the fundamental gospel. It's, it's the basic gospel. Amen. And I'm not sure that believers have ever fully grasped the power of Hebrews 10. Especially verses 2. That's all written. It's written to Hebrews. Mm -hmm. People that had been under the, the old covenant for all of their lifetimes and for, you know, all the years that, from, from the time the Mosaic Law was given. So, verse 2 says, For then will they have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more consciousness of sin. So, a, a true revelation, not just intellectual assent or uh, acknowledging something uh, intellectually, but actually having the revelation of it, a true revelation of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ will remove sin consciousness. Mm -hmm. yes. Hallelujah. And that's what we're after. That's what we really want. That's where liberty comes. That's where freedom comes. That's where peace comes. Amen. That's where you can relax and go to bed at night, close your eyes without fear, amen, and wake up the next morning. What you got going for me today, Lord? What, what's on the agenda today? What do you want to do? How do you want to do this? Amen. Amen. I don't have to get up going, oh man, man, I gotta clear some stuff up here real quick before I get up, you know, out of bed because problems could be coming. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. But church, for a large part and for a long time, hasn't fully understood that the works of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ once and for all time took care of my sin. Yes. Past present and future. Yes. I mean, this is an old cliche now, but people always say, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, when, when you were born again, all of your sins up to that point were forgiven. Well, every sin that I ever committed was future when Jesus was crucified. Amen? So it's not just the stuff I did before I got born again. It's everything that I would ever do in my life was covered by the blood of Jesus. I was in Him before the foundation of the world. As believers, we were. So the sacrifice that He made in terms of everybody other than the people that had already died prior to His coming were going to be future sins. And we struggle with this thinking that, okay, well that's what the church has done to us and say, okay, praise the Lord, you're, you're clean as the driven snow now. You're like full of white, you know, and, and and then the next service you come to the following Wednesday or Sunday you come back, and now it's, hey, I don't know what you've been doing. <laughs> you've been out there sinning. And you need to pray back through. Now, I'm not saying we should re-evaluate and, and, you know, concentrate on how we live for God, but I'm saying that has put us in the mindset that we're on this treadmill. Uh, we're on this gerbil thing. That, you know, <laughs> we got this little thing trying to get the generator to pump up enough faith and energy and, and joy and all this stuff by just do, 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 do. And that's not, what, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to have, look at the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in the perfection of what it is mm -hmm. and say, there is no more sin for me. Yes, I'm in Christ. I've, I've been born again. He covered all of that. It's all been taken care of. It's not just covered. It's eliminated. Amen. It's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Now it's a, yeah, as far as the east is from the west. I don't even understand that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Randy, Randy. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. So, when we sin, and we do sin by the definition that is given under the Old Covenant. Not, not by His definition, not by God, but by what the Old Covenant declared to be sin, right? So when we fall short, when we come short of the perfection of God, what happens? It doesn't mean that the sacrifice has to be offered again the way it was under the Old Covenant. They don't, we don't have to go back again and say, hey, you know, I have this problem and now i got an issue here and I, I, I need to be forgiven again. So we don't have another sacrifice. It means that we were already completely covered once and for all. Hebrews 10.10 10. Hmm. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we 
these things have to be repeated. We have to, we have to meditate on these things. We have to focus on them because otherwise we're easily distracted by other things. By the words of the enemy. I saw what you did. I heard you say that. You know, I mean, just what happens. Praise the Lord. So, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Forever. Praise the Lord. When you understand your sanctification, you're separated. You are one with God. You've been sanctified, right? And once you understand that sanctification and understand that it isn't based on performance, but it's based on an offering. You're sanctified because of the offering of Jesus Christ. Now, I've, I've you know, been in churches where they, where they tell you, well, yeah, you're saved, but you're not sanctified. You've got to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't do that any more than you could save yourself. Yeah. You have been separated, set apart to God. You are His. He has purchased you. Amen? Amen. So, this is not about, you know, trying to perform so that now I'm saved, but now if I really do really good, I'll be sanctified. No, you are sanctified. You couldn't be saved without being sanctified. Thank you, Jesus. Alright? So, Hebrews 9, verse 12. So, it's not based on our performance but it's based on an offering. Praise the Lord. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood, He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. I mean, it can't get much clearer than this, right? Hebrews 10, again, back to verse 12 through 14, right? Hebrews 10... 12 through 14. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. That's us. So that's the people that are saved. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can't be any clearer than this, right? It's simple. It's easy to understand. For by one offering he has perfected forever those that have been saved, those that are sanctified, those that are in Christ. I'm looking at perfect people. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I could call a perfect several things, but not a perfect person. Praise the Lord. But I am according to the Word of God. That's a Jesus. Amen? Alright, remember now, in verse 10, we are sanctified by the offering of Jesus' body and not our performance. Settled, right? Right? All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 30 and 31. 1 Corinthians 1, 30 and 31. 1 Corinthians 30? Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, Okay. verse 30 and 31. All right, thank you. My hearing's dyslexic. <laughs> but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Covers it all, right? Mm -hmm. So, I believe that if we ever renew our minds with this truth, we're going to begin to walk out of that perfection that we already have. Instead of struggling to attain it we'll begin to walk in the reality of it. Listen, this is, you may say, well, I've heard all this, David. Yeah, but this is the key to operating in the gift of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. This is the key to operating by the Spirit of God. Because if you have a question about your sanctification, a question about your righteousness, and your separation, and your sinless condition, then you're going to have a problem operating in the gifts of the Spirit. Because every time you have a lay hands on the sick, the enemy is going to be right there talking to you saying, you really think God's going to heal this person with you after, after what you did today? Mm -hmm. After what you said? After what you thought? I, I guarantee you, he'll put doubt there. Yes. Make you double-minded, and then you can't receive anything from the Lord. 
So this is, this is more than just a feel-good gospel. This is more than just me feeling good that I'm not going to hell and me and God are on good terms. This is about doing what God has placed us here in this planet to do. To be the body of Christ. Just like it says in the, uh, Acts chapter 1, at the very beginning, he said, O Theophilus, he's writing this, this, this uh, uh, book about all of the things that Jesus began to do and teach. He began. He didn't, he didn't finish it all. That's why we're still here. We are the body of Christ. We are to carry on the work of Christ. And you cannot do it with a, with a mind that is confused about whether you're sinless or not. This is how Jesus operated so profoundly mm -hmm. and perfectly was because He knew He was innocent. Uh -huh. He knew He had no sin in His life. And we are now, He's not ashamed to call us His brother. God looks at us the same way He looked at Jesus. Amen. Without sin. Praise the Lord. So, Genesis chapter 29 and verse 16. Let me show you a metaphor here. This, these are all through the Bible. We talk about them all the time. But this thing is all about Jesus. And uh, not that these stories are real. I'm not saying they're not true historic facts. I'm just saying they're also pointing to a greater truth than just the historic evidence that we have in the Bible. So, you all will probably know this story, and I hope you do, uh, because I'm not going to read it all to you. Hmm. I am going to read uh, verses 16 through 20. And Laban had two daughters. And remember, this is Jacob. He and Esau had this conflict. They're twins. He gets the birthright from Esau by kind of manipulation, but nevertheless, he was supposed to have it. He was, the elder was supposed to serve the younger and so forth. So... Now, he's got his brother mad at him because he's got the birthright, so he bails and runs off to uh, some in-laws. <laughs> actually, I think it's his mother's brother. So he leaves, and he gets there, and he's, he, he comes to this place, and actually comes to, uh, initially he comes to a uh, pool, uh, and the, or to a, uh, uh, what, what do I want to call it? Uh, a well. Good word. Uh, a well. And these women are trying to feed their sheep or water their sheep. And these other men come in there and are harassing them and not letting them get to the well. Jacob runs them off, rolls the stone off the, off the top of the well so that they can water the sheep. They bring him home and lo and behold, it's Laban, it's Uncle Laban. Then Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah and the name of the younger was Rachel. Say praise the Lord, Leah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to say some stuff, but this is not personal, praise the Lord. This is a good person. She's, in, she's got it. This one is for sure. I'm not positive about the other one, but that one I know. It. So Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well favored. Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Well, I want to go through verse 20, Mike. And Laban said, It's better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. Stay, live with us. Okay? And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love that he had for her. All right? Now, here's, here's the metaphor. Here's the type. Jacob comes to Laban, who has these two daughters, Leah, which in... There's several uh, translations for that word. One of them is weary. One of them is slow-eyed. There's some other things, but one of them is weary. So, he comes, he has these two daughters, Leah, which means weary, and Rachel means new lamb. E-W-E, female lamb. Alright? Jacob falls in love with Rachel, or I should say, according to the metaphor, he falls in love with the lamb. And so he goes to Laban and he says, what do I got to do to enter into a covenant relationship with the lamb? Mm -hmm. Okay. Marriage relationship uh -huh. with Rachel, the lamb. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Laban says, you're going to have to work for me for seven years. And then at the end of your work, I'll give her to be your wife. Hmm. Isn't that like the religious system that most people sit under? Right. Hmm. People fall in love with the Lamb. They're drawn by the Spirit of God. And then they're told the only way you can get the Lamb is work. Whew. Labor. Got that right. You'll get the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't realize that there's an older sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise the 
Boy, working for the Lamb without knowing that there is an older sister in the wings. Mm. And that, according to law, the older sister have to be married to her first. Yeah. Wow. So you know the story. Laban th tricks Jacob into uh, marrying Leah. And then there's this big celebration. <clears throat> and the wedding feast arrives and the veil is put over Leah's face, as was the custom. And that's amazing. The veil always speaks to the law in the New Testament. Anytime the, right. anytime the veil is mentioned, mm -hmm. it's talking about the law. Yep. All right. Look at 2 Corinthians now, chapter 3, verses 15 through 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 15 through 18. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Mm. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He's talking about the difference between the relationship we have with Jesus and the relationship we would have with the law. There's liberty here. We've been set free, right? Yeah. So we go to receive, and a lot of times all we get is something that's veiled. <clears throat> we don't know what we're getting. Because you come to the church and, well, praise the Lord, you need, you need Jesus. Yes, I want, I want Jesus. <laughs> but Jesus is veiled in a lot of churches. And what you find out you're really getting is a law. You mm -hmm. thought you were getting Jesus. You thought you were getting the Lamb. But you're getting tired. Yeah. You're getting weary, right? Mm -hmm. We're reaching for the Lamb. Rachel... And we get weary. Leah. Wow. Look at Genesis. Okay, Genesis 29, verse uh, 25 through 27. So I'm saying, that's what I'm saying is, see, it's everywhere in the Bible. We're, and this is just like, you know, you come along to the New Testament and then you start making up a bunch of stuff. It's all written out for us through, for, from, from Genesis all the way through Revelation. This is all a revelation of Jesus Christ. So it came to pass... That in the morning, behold, it was Leah. This is the, the wedding night. I don't know what wine they were drinking, but even the veil, you would think. I, I, <laughs> he said to Laban, What have you done to me? Can I not serve with thee for Rachel? Why then have you tricked me or beguiled me? And Laban said, It must be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. It must be done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. You can't do it. So fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven more years. Serve me another seven years, and you'll get both of them. <laughs> well, I've been married to one wife for 37 years. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I heard it in the air. I wouldn't take a million for her, but as the saying goes, I wouldn't give you a dime for another one just like her. I'm talking about another one. There you go. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Two would not be good. Amen. <laughs> I heard it in the air. So Jacob says, you promised me, Rachel, and Laban says, yeah, but the law says the oldest has to marry first. Yeah. All right. So the good news here is that Laban says, you fulfill the week that belongs to Leah. And by the way, Jesus fulfilled that week. Yes. Amen. He fulfilled the law so that he could come back and give us Rachel, the lamb. Hmm. Hmm. I feel the Holy Ghost praise <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. He took care of the lamb or, or of the law. He fulfilled the obligation yeah. of the law so that we could have the lamb. Yes. Praise God. Hmm. Hebrews Thank chapter you. 10, verse 16 through 21. Praise God. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, and I will write them. But in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission of these is. There is no more offering for sin. Now let me just add this to it. Jesus 
having a high priest over the house of God. Now that might seem redundant after you've read what's above this, but ha having having uh, excuse me, this is the, the other thing. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, which is only the high priest can do that once a year on the day of atonement, right? Come in and take the blood from the sacrifice and sprinkle it on the ark. Amen. On the mercy seat. That's what the high priest did. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. His flesh gave us access, amen, into the Holy of Holies, or into the presence of God, is what he's talking about. And having a high priest over the house of God. Now, here's the, the simile here, or here's the connection. The high priest, when a sacrifice was brought, he didn't look at the sinner. He didn't ask them what their sin was, or, you know, Tell me about what you've done to fix this sin, what, why, what you're not doing anymore. He didn't look at the sin. He looked at the sacrifice. And if the sacrifice was spotless, the sacrifice was offered and the sins were dealt with. They were taken away. So he, that's what we're talking about here. Having a high priest over the house of God, Jesus has declared us holy. Amen. He looks at the lamb, he looks at himself and says, perfect. Amen. He doesn't look at us and say, well, if you get that together over here, then we'll have a chance of maybe fixing your life up. No, he said, look, I've seen this. It's perfect. Go Glory. your way. You're, you're delivered. You're whole. Glory. Your sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Glory. Because the sacrifice was perfect. Yes. It was spotless, without blemish. Amen. It's accepted of the Lord. Amen. And because of the new covenant, and we've read all those scriptures already, there is no more offering for sin. Once for all. Forever. It's done. Alright? So, the new covenant isn't the one that points to the sin. Right. He doesn't point out who sinned. He just deals with it, right? In fact, let me show you this. John chapter 9, uh, verses 1 through 4. And it shows up here uh, in the context of what we're talking about tonight. In John chapter 9. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. So Jesus isn't just describing that he's about to do a miracle but that he works the works that God gave him to do. Amen? The works that God gave him to do was the work of the cross and redemption. Mm -hmm. Not just about a miracle he's about to perform for this guy to see. Are you with me? Yep. Alright? So he's talking about, i got to be crucified so that redemption can come. Amen? So that he can bring us into this new covenant. Amen? Amen. All right. So it's possible, based on the, everything that we've read here tonight, to be blind not only in our physical birth, but even in our new birth. They praise the Lord. Amen. Churches are filled with blind people. Right. Born again and don't even know it. They, right. Yeah. It's possible to be born blind naturally and to be born again and be blind. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yep. Failed with the law. Yep. Unable to see the beauty of Christ. Unable to see the perfection of what He's done. Come on. Amen? Blind to the finished work and the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's oh, amen. wrap it up here with Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 through 20. Hebrews 10, 16 through 20. 16. Praise the Lord. That's why it says, Eyes to see and see not. Amen. So we know he's talking about the spiritual eyes. He's not talking about natural eyes because he says they have eyes to see. They just don't see. Ears to hear, but they don't hear. So it's possible to be born naturally deep, dumb, and blind, right? And it's possibly to be born again with the same affliction, only spiritually speaking. Because of how you're being taught. Because of what you believe. Yes. Hallelujah. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I'll write them. 
and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Amen. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. Give him a hand. He did a good job. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let's let's endeavor, hallelujah, to walk in the truth. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Let's let's thank make you. our focus not on uh oh what about that? Mm. No, let's let's focus on no sin consciousness. Mm. When the devil comes to tell you about sin, just say, Jesus took care of that. Talk to him. Mm. He's talking to mm. Jesus. Mm. Praise the Lord. Shut up. Mm. You are a liar. Remember, every time you hear something coming from the enemy, it's a lie. Yep. He is a liar. The Father of lies. Every time he opens his mouth, he's lying. Uh huh. It's a good thing. Because every time you hear something like that, you go, liar! You liar! I'm not listening. I'm not buying. Uh -uh. I am redeemed. Yes. I am sanctified. Mm -hmm. I am in Christ. I am the, the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the good news. Praise God. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you and make His face to shine upon you and give you His peace. Amen. The Lord bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's good news worth sharing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 Yes.